Hello and welcome everybody to International Christian Community, in short ICC, our midweek meetings. This Sunday, or rather I should say Wednesday, we are so excited to have you because it's a little shift from the normal format that we used to have. The normal format was where we used to have this uh, teaching on what we call the uh, school of uh, practical Christianity. We've been doing that for quite a while now and we'll continue, of course. We're having a little break uh, today because we just decided that it might be a good idea to just look a little bit into this entire uh, COVID-19 which has been going on around. And uh, also, um, it's a little bit um, unfortunate that uh, while it has been going on, there's also a lot of fake news and fake medication and fake masks. And, and, and it's just been crazy uh, how people have been capitalizing the situation. Uh, when it comes to, I'm not a you know, medical doctor, I'm a theologian, and so is Lillian. Um, and uh, we want to address this from a theological point of view, mm. alongside with the question and answers that you might questions that you may have, and some answers that we can share. And I also have some questions already prepared because of what has been asked before, hoping and praying that uh, you will be uh, informed, that mm -hmm. you would be um, edified. Mm -hmm. And more than anything else, that you'll be set free. You know, the Bible says that we will know the truth and that the truth will set us free. God's word is the truth. Hallelujah. Amen. So before we start, I'm just going to ask Lillian to help me to not only pray for uh, this session, mm -hmm. which will end in an hour or now less than that. Also, but pray for each and every one of you that are out there. And uh, we have been constantly in prayer these days a lot. Mm -hmm for uh, what's going on around the world and we just want to continue to pray for you mm. and as uh, we mentioned we just want to pray and then after that we'll go right into the i would say my take on this topic and then we'll go straight into uh, questions and answers which i hope you have prepared if not you can uh, send them if you're watching online or uh, of course uh, right now we can't do it by email anymore it has to be online um, we just want to ask Lilian now to pray so just join us as we Pray for this specific and special time of question and answers regarding COVID-19. Yes, let's do that. Mm. Father in heaven, we thank you for this privilege you, and opportunity mm. we have to learn from your word mm. and to be connected to ICC despite of this lockdown. Thank you, Lord. And we pray this evening that your presence mm. will be here, your anointing will be here. And as mm. we correspond, and that you will give wisdom to Ravi to be able mm, to thank you, Jesus. answer these mm. questions. Mm. And God, above all else, that you will minister and touch needs, Lord, mm. beyond boundaries mm -hmm. to each and every of the viewers, mm. locally mm. and beyond. Mm. And God, we also want to pray for each and every of our ICC family, mm. near and far, for your hedge of protection. Yes, Lord. Mm. We remember your word, mm. Thou, O Lord, are a shield to us. Thank you, You Jesus. are the glory. You are Thank the lifter you, of our head. Thank so we want to claim that. We want to claim your mm -hmm, word, Father. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Your hand of protection mm. upon each and every of our member. Mm. We thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. You know, we are actually very thankful to God for, uh, for example, last Sunday, uh, we had this uh, beautiful Easter Sunday. And um, yes. we actually... Ironically, in spite of the fact that churches are being shut down, including ICC, you know, the viewership, <laughs> our online viewership, of course, has actually grown. Mm -hmm. Even those in our um, home, uh, I would say our Facebook uh, group, uh, when we first started, it was a couple of hundreds. And then we were thanking to God last year when we had uh, reached the 500 mark and the 1,000 mark. Now we're actually close to 1,005 followers from around the world, mm. including uh, the over 100 uh, here in Denmark. It is uh, very humbling, to be honest. <laughs> Neither of us are uh, uh, you know, used to doing things like this. But uh, I think that it's been tremendously encouraging. Yeah. Yeah, uh, for, to see that there are many more following us, and we thank God for that. And I just hope and pray that you'll be blessed 
by the things that we do in the ministry and uh, continue to ask that God will just uh, be a blessing to you. Amen. Amen. Now, if you're ready, please uh, follow me as I first, before going into the questions, and if you do have questions concerning COVID-19, now again, uh, please make sure that they're theological questions or misunderstandings of theology, mm -hmm. not the medical aspect, because I'm yeah. not a medical doctor. I've got two PhDs, but they have nothing to do with medicine. It has to do with theology and psychology, so therefore, don't send me anything about medicine. Um, ask the doctors about it, but when it comes to theology or counselling, uh, I might be able to take your questions there. But first, this is what I would say my take on COVID-19. Um, so let's just uh, try to listen to it. A couple of scriptures that I have, Lillian is going to help me to uh, read those scriptures, and then we will just go into it. Now, many are concerned about the unprecedented situation we are facing today. And no doubt, this gives room for much speculations and presumptions about end-time prophecy. Uh, I don't know if that sounds familiar to you. But there are those who have asked me uh, uh, privately, what is God saying in all of this? And my standard reply has been, read the Bible and pray, as Andy added, uh, added those two words. I know this sounds rather simplistic, um, but in truth, these are not just a Christian cliché. It's the truth. However, here is my take on the situation. Consider this uh, prayerfully and let God uh, guide you to the truth because it's not my say or anybody else's say. It's really the Word of God, and this is it. There are three main thoughts that I have. I want to, you know, just kind of bring this by you and let's uh, take it up in question and answers. First of all, this world has been given a forced Sabbath from the love of God. That was the very first thought that came to me way back more than a month ago when it started here in Denmark. When I was asked, uh, what do you think? I said, I don't know. I just feel like it's a Sabbath that was forced upon us, mm -hmm. and uh, this is uh, what I have uh, written about that. Far too long, we have all been caught up in a mad rat race mm -hmm. in the world and the church. Our human advancement, our civilization have placed God on the back burner. The amount of rampant display and boasting, even of our sin, immorality, our violence, war, greed, and killing of innocent children, surely has to count for something to a holy God. The worship of lusts of the eyes and the lusts of the flesh and the pride of life uh, surely has to provoke somehow a jealous God. You know, our God is a jealous God. Mm. This forced lockdown is a time for the world, and I must, might add, and the church, to relent and reflect. I can only pray that after the destruction of the Tower of Babel, which happened many, many years ago, one of mankind's um, deliberate form of uh, trying to prove themselves to God, that mankind, mankind will not revert again to what, like what they did building pyramids when God destroyed the Tower of Babel. They started building pyramids instead. Uh, I just hope that um, that will not be the case. But in replacement, uh, we will... Uh, search God and seek God and find Him in a time like this. This is my first thought. It's all about, I think and believe that it's like a forced Sabbath that's coming upon us. Mm. Now, here's my second thought. And I only have three thoughts and then we'll go into question and answers. This is also, uh, as it's going on in the world for believers and non-believers, but specific, uh, specifically to the church, this is my thought. This is a time 
Listen to me carefully now and, 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 and don't take me, uh, don't get me wrong because I, I'm really saying this out of love. This is a time of separation of the sheep and the goats by the care and concern of Almighty God. Believers worldwide in general have somewhat become apathetic uh, towards the gospel. You know, you go to church, you go back, yeah, we give, and yeah, we serve if we have to. But somehow it can become a routine and we might lose the spirit or the significance of it. Again, it doesn't help when our user-friendly messages and worship attainment mega centers uh, they, they they simply cannot produce the spiritual disciplines that are necessary for a godly life let alone an impending time of persecution that will come upon the churches in the end times as jesus said now the parable of the weed and the weeds um, have always fascinated me, to be honest with you. And it was only these days that I read it again and again and started to wonder like, hey Lord, isn't this so appropriate for what's going on today? So Lillian is going to help me. And Lillian will read from the book of Matthew, chapter 13. This is the parable of the weed and the weeds. Um, chapter 13, verses 24 to 30, and then I'll make some comments about it. Just listen, just listen to this, uh, uh, par uh, this parable. Yes, it says here that Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat mm -hmm. and went away. Mm. Then, when the weeds sprouted and formed heads, mm. then the weeds also appear. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Mm. Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you're pulling the weeds, Mm. You may uproot the wheat with them. Mm. Let both grow together until they harvest. Mm. At that time, I will tell the harvester, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned. Then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. Mm. It's a fascinating, fascinating parable that Jesus was talking about. Just think about it. Just pause and think about it for a moment. You've got a man who went out to his field and there he was. He was going to um, expect that he's going to get a great harvest of wheat. And obviously, very important, while everyone was sleeping. Did you hear that? As she read, while everyone was sleeping, mm -hmm. that was the time the enemy came and planted weeds mm. among the wheat. And of course, the servant says, what's going on here? We, we planted wheat. And he said, no, 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 don't, 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 don't pull them out right now because if you pull out the weed, you might also disrupt the very tender roots of the wheat and you might destroy them both. Just, just let them grow. But when it's all done, we'll harvest the wheat and then we'll take care of the weeds. It's very, very important. Mm. And um, I have quite often, those of you who are in ICC, heard me mention this, that, uh, and I've said that the world is actually asleep in the dark uh, while the church is asleep in the night. Remember, this happened while they were sleeping. And uh, like I've mentioned to you before, um, the problem we have in our generation, I, I think, uh, and please take this with love. It's not with judgment or condemnation. I think the problem we have in our generation is that we have a sick church in a dying world. Therefore, the church has to reform. The church has to repent. The church has to have a revival before we're able to bring the real message of the gospel uh, to the dying world. We can't bring this uh, half-cooked, uh, user-friendly, um, diluted gospel 
Jesus paid a heavy price um, for the world, and we can't just dilute it and uh, bring it uh, in that fashion because the real gospel it costs us something. So therefore, still Jesus said, this is what Jesus said. He said the harvest is plenty in our times. You know, in the harvest time, the harvest is plenty. But the laborers are few. This is found in the book of Matthew, chapter 9 and verse uh, 37. Yeah. That Lillian will help me to read. Yeah. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Amen. And in fact, he says, uh, pray that the Lord of the harvest, you know, that he will send forth harvests. Um, friends, it has been harvest time for a long time, to be honest. And uh, especially during this time, there will be a harvest. In fact, there will be two harvests that will take place. One of the harvests is believers turning uh, to the Lord, mm -hmm. including lukewarm believers, if you will. But another harvest is that there will be a separation of the wheat from the weeds or the sheep from the goats. I really hope you're listening to me and that you're paying attention because this is so important. There is a fourth, a forced uh, Shabbat, Sabbath upon the entire planet. This mm -hmm. is to get everybody's attention to, to stop, pause, and get your, your acts together. Mm -hmm. For the church specifically here is very specific. It's about a separation that we are supposed to be a bride for Jesus that is without spot or wrinkle or blemish. Uh, this, this, this afternoon we were reading the Bible and I was telling Lillian about a certain passage that when Jesus said uh, uh, in, in, the, in the passage in the book of uh, uh, Ephesians, when he was talking specifically about husband and wife and Paul was talking about the cleansing that the, the cleansing of the bride. And I was telling Lillian, I said, you know, the cleansing of the bride actually has to also do with this process of cleansing that goes through when you go into a Jewish marriage. In those days, when the guests come to a marriage, they're supposed to wash their hands and, and wash their feet as part of the cleansing. But the bride herself will have to go to like a baptismal uh, uh, pool, you know, that, if you will understand, made out of the rock, cut down, she goes to it to, to be cleansed and come out. The bride is supposed to be totally clean and pure as she approaches the, the bridegroom. And we, the bride, the church, the bridegroom uh, is, is about to come and he's going to call us for that wedding. And God is doing something in terms of cleansing and cleaning. Yeah. So the church is called to be an apostle to reflect and hopefully turn to him in terms of this harvest. There's also mm -hmm. another harvest going on in the church itself. A cleaning judgment begins in the house of the Lord. Therefore, we need to be aware of that. And this is my last thought considering what is going on in this time like this. Now, that's because, as I mentioned, third but not uh, third and uh, not the last or the least, Jesus is returning for a bride without spot, without wrinkle, or without blemish. That's my last thought. Now, why is it that we seldom hear about holiness being preached in churches today? Just ask yourself this question. When was the last I went to church and there was a message specifically about being holy? Just about holiness. Ask yourself this question. I think it speaks volumes. Why do Christians frown when you talk about repentance? Have you ever thought about it? Especially these days when you talk to Christians about repentance, they suddenly feel like you're judging why are you so judgmental? Now, please understand there's a big difference between being judgmental and having a conviction. None of us are called to judge. Obviously, it's God who judges. Jesus said, all judgments has been given to me. We're not called to judge. Hey, but that doesn't mean you, you can't have a strong opinion or a strong conviction about the gospel. It's very important to know the difference. And um, God, uh, has God somehow, because of our opinions, has God somehow laxed? His standards, because the majority have decided their ways are better than his. Um, has our modern civilization somehow watered down the true, uncompromising gospel message? Has it? Now, God had never really revealed himself in terms of who he was. 
we see God in the book of uh, Genesis, and then we see again God appearing uh, in the book of Genesis later on, uh, revealing himself to Moses. All God says to him is that, hey, before you even come closer, take, get rid of your sandals because I'm holy. You know, you, you come with those sandals, you're going to be consumed. Get rid of your sandals. Moses comes closer. And then Moses, he gets to know God slowly in the process. And the very first time uh, God actually kind of reveals himself was when Moses said, Lord, you know, I've known you. I, I just have this, this desire. I want to just see you. I want to be able to, 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 to see your face. Can, can I see you, God? And God then tells Moses, look, Moses, um, you can't because, man, if you see me, you're going to drop dead. You can't even stand with your sandals close to me, let alone see my face. I tell you what, Moses, I love you, really. So I'm going to pass by you, and I'm kind of going to block your eyes so you can't see me and put you in the cleft of a, of, a, of a rock. And when I pass by you, you can see my back, and that will allow you to see and so God does that to Moses. He passes by. And this is the very first time when God passes by Moses. Only gets to see only the back. Only the back. Not even the front. And God is the very first time, in a sense, God is giving his, uh, his, his CV or his calling card. And God says, all right, Moses, you want to you know who I am? Here you go. This is my calling card. And then we find this little bit, a small little drop in the ocean of the character of God for the first time. In the scriptures, it's found in the book of Exodus chapter 34, verses 6 to 7. It's awesome because I really want you to, to grasp this. The very first time God reveals his character, his balanced character. So Lillian is going to help me to read Exodus chapter 34, verses 6 to 7. And then I'll just make some comments to it. It says here, the Lord passed before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, but who will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children and the children's children to the third and the fourth generation. Amen. Just notice this, friends, brothers and sisters, notice this. He is a God. That's his CV. He says, hey, I'm the Lord. I'm your God. I'm merciful. I'm gracious. I'm slow to anger. I'm abounding in love. I'm faithful. And I keep my steadfast love for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. But that's the problem we have with our church today. That's where we stop his character. And we don't go further. Please, <laughs> would you go a little bit further to make it complete? Because it's not a full stop. It's a comma. And he goes on to say, But who will by no means clear the guilty, mm -hmm. be it angels or demons or mankind, mm -hmm. visiting the iniquity of the fathers on children, and the children's children to the third and the fourth generation. How come we put so much emphasis on the former part of the verse and very little on the latter part of it? Because this is the complete character of God. You've got to understand that He is a just God, but He's still the judge of the earth. That's why as the world is being put on a pause and as there's a separation going on between the ships and the go, trust me, when this thing is over, it's going to reveal who are the backbenchers in terms of Christianity and Christ and who are the persons that are going to come forth into the kingdom of God. And uh, some people, even in a normal situation and circumstance, can't even turn up <coughs> to church. I mean, God have mercy. You think after a time like this, they're going to be able to turn up? But God will be able to draw people. The Bible says in the last days, He will draw the hearts of the children to the fathers. And this also includes the children of God to the fathers, the Heavenly Father. And this is one of the things that's going on. And so I'm going to uh, give you the conclusion, and then we're going to take up some questions and answers. Otherwise, I also have some questions. Uh, I hope you already started sending some of the questions to Ulf. So I conclude. 
with the way <laughs> I started. Listen to me, friends. It is time to read the Bible and pray. It is. It is time. Draw nigh to God like you have never have before. Don't take my word or that of anyone for, you know, uh, for it. It is because uh, before God that uh, you and I, we will stand on the day of judgment. So then just, just don't take my word for it. He is just, like I said, but he still is the judge of the earth. It is time for humanity, I really believe, to sincerely and seriously seek his face in prayer and possibly fasting. He will reveal to us what we need to change in our individual lives as opposed to what we think needs changed in the world today. Mm. It's just my humble take. So this is just my humble take. Now with that, uh, we would like to go into a time of questions and answers. Before we go any further, I just want to ask if Lillian has any comments about this because it's the first time she's hearing it as you are. So perhaps she has some comments about these three thoughts the world being in a false Sabbath and that uh, it's a time of separation between the sheep and the goats and that he's coming back for a bride that is without spot or wrinkle or blemish. Any comments, Lillian, about this? I mean, personally, I think this is a very re reflective time. Yeah, there's a pause mode, pause button that God has set and personally, it's been good for our family, it's been good. And I pray and wish the same for many of you that you have used this time to reflect. And I think it's also the time where it's an exit test of whether church or no church, am I still a believer? Hmm. Do I need all this extra external stimulation? Hmm. Um, so I think all of us have hmm. been put to test. Hmm. Uh, by default, we have been here every Sunday. My children have come and support us and serve as well as Uf and Michael. Hmm without fail mm. for the last five, six weeks mm. we have been here but for many of you who are sitting back home mm. it is a time to reflect mm. um, your relationship I remember many times standing as a service leader I said you know it's a privilege and opportunity we have to be able to come together to worship God because there are many of our brothers and sisters in the world mm. who live in countries mm -hmm. where it's mm. forbidden for them right. to go to church you know right. And I never dreamed in my lifetime that this would actually mm. happen mm. in Denmark, democratic Denmark, right? Mm. In the civilized world. And um, none of us see this coming. And I pray that all of us, mm. um, with the help of Jesus, will fight the good fight mm. and finish this race. I don't know, it'd be 10th of May or I don't know when mm. this um, lockdown will come to an end. Mm. But I pray and wish the same for you as this has been a wonderful time for me and my family. I pray the same for you as well. Mm. Mm. Amen. Um, during the time of uh, uh, when I was a missionary in Uganda, many, many years ago, um, maybe I've never told you this story. I've told this story to the others you know, in the midweek service, but the way I started that church was a time when there was a civil war going on in the country. And I was in the second largest uh, city, not the, the capital city. And right about you know uh, 10 15 kilometers away from the second largest city uh, there were some rebels that were fighting the the government army this is after the coup has taken place and you had a, a, a ruling army a ruling party and you still had you know pockets of rebels but this particular pocket of rebels that were fighting uh, the the army at that time they called themselves the holy spirit movement out of all the names on the earth, can you believe it? They picked the name the Holy Spirit movement. Now, what happened was, uh, because of that, when I was there as a missionary, we had already you know, rented a, a, a house and we were supposed to start a church and, and everything was set. And just then, the government put a lockdown and said no religious meetings because the Holy Spirit movement, they didn't know which one is the Holy Spirit or not. So the only church that was allowed to function was the Anglican church and the Catholic Church, but the rest of us were all shut down. And so I was there to start my church, and I couldn't. And I said, what am I going to do, Lord? I'm here to start a church. And actually, uh, what we did was we started, anyways, an underground church. When I say underground church, hear me right, 
we had to close the doors and lock the windows and be quiet, we gathered. There was no social distancing. It was just you can't meet. But I felt in my heart that, no, no, we should pray to God. So we actually started a secret church <laughs> behind closed doors, curtains closed, very quietly clapping our hands, praise God very softly and preach very uh, you know, softly and then try to go out in twos and threes, not in a big crowd. Um, that was an, an, an interesting time. I just wanted to, to share that with you, that that's how actually the church, when I was in Uganda, started. And of course, the band was lifted, and then you were able to go out and hallelujah and amen. Um, therefore, uh, we have, have not yet been forbidden from worshipping God. Uh, it's just a lockdown in terms of social distancing. So I just want to encourage you to um, always be faithful to Him and uh, and don't shrink back from serving him because he's worthy to be served and he's worthy to be praised hallelujah i don't know if you have any questions yet but in the meantime i have some questions that's already been prepared and the first question that was asked me was um does is there anything uh does covid 19 has anything to do with the 5g network in terms of is this the end time prophecy it is because of 5g and then now all of a sudden we are all having this COVID-19. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is the first question that was asked me. And I just want to share this with everyone so that uh, you can all kind of uh, benefit from this answer. Um, my immediate answer to this is that as convincing as some of these documentaries that are being put out there, I just want you to know that there's no evidence that it is such. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, that particular uh, very convincing uh, you know, um, viral video that was running around was there. Uh, when I saw it, I, I was trying to you know, follow the, the, conviction, the, the, the convincing uh, display of all that's being shown as a proof, a scientific proof. Towards the end of it, uh, the person that was advocating this uh, principle or this theory stated that it all is because of the 5G that all the currencies of the world was going to be locked down and that he had the answer to the new cryptocurrency. And I thought that's really interesting. <laughs> I, you know, it was kind of interesting that it, it was all surrounded and boiled down to this one fact about cryptocurrency and that he had the answer. So obviously, um, I just want to let you know that when somebody comes out with a with a, with a, with a documentary like that that looks all fancy because you can do almost you can perform miracles with cameras today you know we only have one camera that we use in ICC during our production and sometimes you can think that whoa this thing is so wonderful so it's amazing what you can do with a software and a cam and a camera today so just because a documentary is produced like a newscast um, be cautious find out uh, how credible the the source is not just because it looks like news. Um, and also when you get a, 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 an article that is being sent to you, sometimes these articles are sent to you and it looks like a newspaper clip or a picture. Trust me, today with software, you can actually um, produce all sorts of uh, newspaper-looking um, articles. It's not that complicated to do it. And just because somebody does that and take a picture of it and send it to you, some of these newspapers doesn't even exist. Purpose, uh, and, and, it's, and it's trying to uh, tell you that this particular newspaper has this information. So don't just buy something. Please find out the sources. Where, who is this source? Where does it come from? How credible is this source? How reliable is this information? Before you go there, that's just about the um, COVID-19 and what we call uh, uh, 5G. I don't know if you have heard anything about uh, no. this realm. No, you haven't? Okay, that's interesting. Now, the second one that I heard not too long ago, uh, also it was being sent around, it was supposed to be that uh, the, the, the cure to COVID-19 is that COVID-19 doesn't really exist and that we should all just take vitamins and that is okay. Now, the theological perspective is this. It does exist and for I think it's, it's, it's almost um, sad to say it does not exist because there are people who actually lose or lost loved ones in their family, and to go to them and say that this doesn't exist, I think is almost an insult. We've got to be sensitive. So please understand that it's a real virus, all right? And, and the way it spreads, it's still, there's so much of unknowns about it, and that is why sometimes in a, in a family, there's a husband that is infected, and the wife who is like with him all the time, 
wasn't infected and so why we don't know we, we're still trying to find out there's a lot of unknowns more than the knowns but one of the fact is that uh, what is real is that it is a real virus mm-hmm. right it's not a fake uh, thing and so there's a guy i remember watching it was very you know uh, what do you call convincing um information he had about the fact that, oh, you just need to take vitamins and it's all going to be over. I, I'm a firm believer over the fact that our body uh, has uh, its own very robust immune system. Like I told you, I'm not a medical scientist, but I worked 10 years in the uh, health department here in Denmark, so therefore I have a little understanding about it. Having said that, this is a real virus. It's not a fake. It's real, and so I want, want you to know that. Um, I was told that there's some questions. I just want to take these questions before I go on to the other default questions that I have. One of the questions that has been sent by one of the viewers, it says here, do you have any tips, verses uh, that I can use to bring my family, co-workers, closer to God in times like this? Yes, I would say that instead of verses, I have one verse. And that one verse is found in the book of James, where it says, If you draw close to him, he will draw close to you. So this invitation of salvation is a conditional, uh, uh, what we will call invitation. It's like when you make, take the steps, God will come close to you. So um, what I want to tell you about you concerning your family as well as your co-workers is this. God will always answer a, 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 a heart that is hungry, a seeking heart, a hungry heart. He always answers a hungry heart. It's never been in the scriptures ever before when a person hungered and thirsted thirst after God, that God didn't turn to them. In fact, the Bible makes it very clear that um, if you hunger and thirst for righteousness, you will be filled. That's the kind of God that we have. The question is that we've got to make the first. So what can you do for your family as well as your your co-workers? My suggestion is um, the the first thing that you need to do is tell them what Jesus always told his disciples. Do not fear, because there's a whole lot of fear going on out there, uh, and panic. And some, not all, but some of the media doesn't help. It's feeding this fear, and it's keeping you addicted more or less to that that, that spiral of fear that, that keeps you going. So the first thing you need to tell people is don't fear, because there is a God who can protect you. What's more important is not just your body, but your spirit, which needs to be saved. That's the first step. And how, how can my spirit get saved? Come close to God. How do I come close to God? Draw close to Him and, and encourage them to read the Bible or maybe even read the Bible with them or go to some of the lessons. These lessons that we've been doing online, uh, go back to the beginning lessons, the easier versions, and be able to uh, teach them, disciple them, and be able to draw them closer to you. As far as family is concerned, I would encourage um, like to do what we are doing as a family. Spend time uh, on a regular basis to... Uh, pray. Uh, we we spend uh, every evening, you know, after dinner or whenever it is, we take time together we, to go to a passage, uh, one chapter maybe in the Bible, and then we reflect different ones in the family. Right after that, we go into a time of prayer. We pray for everyone. We we pray for every single person. Those watching online, mm-hmm. who are in our uh, family, our ICC International family, you know, worldwide as well as ICC International Danish uh, family. We pray for every single person for God's blessings and protection over you. Amen. Um, Can I just share a scripture? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7 is my, they are my favorite scripture. It says here, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding. Mm will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Mm. So I know it's um, the unknown, the uncertainty of the job situation, of exam, of children, of when can I see my loved one. There are so many things. 
more questions than answer. And we can cling on to God's word that say not to be anxious about anything. But in every situation, let's present, God knows, present it to him. Before you close your eyes every night, say, God, I throw this back to you. Mm. Yeah, and sleep. Because mm. by worrying, you're not going to change the situation, improve. Mm. Mm. It's not going to move by a centimeter or a millimeter. Yeah, mm. And then it says here that the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, mm. will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Mm. And you go to sleep and let God take care of it. And many times, I promise you, when you're sleeping, the problems are solved. Yeah? Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Amen. Now, another question that was brought up to me before, and I just thought it's good to bring it up openly, is that, is this the end times? Has God finally decided that He's going to end the world? Mm. Well, my friends, let me assure you, uh, it is not the end times. If anything, mm. this is a dress-up rehearsal for what may come in the future. Trust me, uh, what's going to happen in the end times compared to what's going on right now, this is Shangri-La. I mean, to be locked up in your own home with all the accessories that you have and food available in the supermarket and so on. Hey, this is nothing compared to, <laughs> to what may happen. Because when we're talking about the end time, when we're talking about the Antichrist, when we're talking about persecution, where you're actually going to be put to death. Um, so it is not yet the end time, trust me. Uh, but it's a preparation, I think. It's a, it's, it's a kind of a wake-up call, especially for us believers. Mm. And I pray that um, we will uh, use this as a little bit of a, a gentle nudge from, from God the Father, saying, I, I need you to somehow uh, you know, wake up, have your eyes open, and, and be aware of what's going on, because things God could just... You know, change. The, this is God didn't allow. Uh, God did not uh, send this. He is not a God who tempts us. But if the if it's the devil who wants to do this, he allows it. And so this is uh, what is happening now. Along that same line, I also want to share another uh, idea that's floating around the, the the world a lot. Is concerning the fact that is COVID nineteen really from animals from a town or a city called Wuhan in China, or is it actually prepared in a laboratory? There are many you know, thoughts about it going around. As a matter of fact, uh, whether was it from an animal or a laboratory, the fact that it is out, God could have snapped this like this and stopped it. God, you know, nothing happens. Um, why did God allow it? Because he's got a greater plan. Even the devil is created for God's pleasure and he knows what, uh, when his time is. Therefore, um, I don't have the answer and I don't want to speculate either. In a time like this, I just want to mention this to you, viewers. Listen to me very carefully. I often say this, that uh, speculation is the mother of all confusions. Mm. If you want to be confused, you keep on speculating because it's endless, endless, endless. So the fact is, it is here, it's, 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 it's around, and we are faced with it. How do you go about it on a daily basis? is what's important. Now, another thing, it's not a question, but also uh, tied into what Lillian has mentioned. I just think I want to mention to you, the purposes of fear in a time like this uh, could be manifold, not only lockdown. For some of us, it's just lockdown. You know, it's like, hey, this is Shangri-La, it's a holiday. But for some people, it's not only lockdown, but lockdown plus maybe losing a job, maybe even losing a permission to stay in the country. Maybe wherever you are, you may have to leave because perhaps you're there because of your job. If you lose it. And then uh, it's not only uh, uh, that, your, your economy is affected. Your job, your economy. And, and last but not least, these uh, situations can create such stress if you are crammed together, especially in a tiny little living space, two, three bedroom apartment house. You're faced with each other all the time, kids crying and, you know, maybe dogs running around and uh, it can be pretty stressful. And and what's worse, I think, than, than Wuhan is that because, uh, or not Wuhan, uh, COVID that came out of Wuhan or China or wherever it came from, uh, what is worse than it is the stress factor. Because when stress comes, your immune system actually begins to uh, go, uh, the, it, it's not as, as robust as it is 
it, it tends to sort of retreat. And, and when your immune system is not robust, you get a lot more uh, vulnerable to other forms of sickness and disease. Therefore, um, I would strongly, strongly encourage you, especially during this lockdown period, and listen to me very carefully, do have a daily routine. Mm. You must have a daily routine. This uh, is, is almost life and death. I can tell you that if you don't have a routine, you're going to go crazy. Start your day and end your day. Have a routine on a daily basis. Plus, when you're living together, I beg of you, please listen to me. Have rules. You must have rules in a house, even if it's just two people. Who does what, what is right, what is wrong. It's sad, but do you know that the level of divorce has actually increased during this period of lockdowns around the world? It's sad. Separation, domestic violence, um, increase in addictions. Um, people are sometimes not able to handle themselves, let alone handle uh, someone else. And so this is a time to be aware that uh, you need to have routines, you need to have regulations, even among husband and wife, even among children. I think if you don't have that, um, you will not be able to handle that. So there's uh, yet another question. Uh, this question actually is from my son. <laughs> he says, how... Uh, Okay, he's asking a question that is, uh, I think, pretty interesting. Is how can he get more involved in the midweek service? So I think <laughs> it's by watching us and by following us and asking questions <laughs> so he can get more involved in the midweek services, of course. Um, yeah. uh, is there something else you wanted to mention about what I just said? Yeah, I, I think yeah. from the practical approach, of course, the mm. blessing is that right now it's loosening. Mm. Um, so the younger ones, I think families with small children, it's been tough. It's been a great challenge for you. Um, being home, trying to work or trying to follow your education online and having to take care of the little ones as well. It's been a challenge, but thank God right now it's opening up. And so the little ones can gradually go to school and that is helpful. But I would also like to encourage you is to take time to go for a walk. You know, if you're all stuck in a home, 24-7 is tough. Mm. Go for a bike, a walk, whatever that can help you. Um, yeah, all of us have different ways of as finding release. As long release. as you're allowed to go for a walk, because in some countries, the lockdown is... Yes, yeah. wherever you are, but uh, in the and context of Denmark. With, um, uh, with social distancing. <laughs> yes, yes. I go for daily walk because of my medical condition, so I need to go for my daily walk and I observe social... Um, distances and so forth and Josiah is a guy that has a lot of energy and with all the gyms closed and sports club closed it's been tough mm. for him so he found a, a court somewhere in a school nearby and he goes there and yeah he get his release you know so all of us have different mm. ways but I think it's important thank God I keep saying God is so merciful to us at least here in, in, in the context of Denmark we have been having lovely weather it's wonderful weather go for a walk you get fresh air vitamin D sunshine and um, it will really mm. help Yep, and I think it's also appropriate to mention that of course you know if you have the right or the possibility to go out and walk like Lillian or like Josiah to play a basketball in a basketball court nearby perfect and you're still observing uh, uh, what you call social distancing However, if you're inbound and you're not able to, you're not that mobile, there are things you can do at home too. You know, you can uh, be, uh, buy, be able to buy exercise machines that are within the home and they're not that big and expensive, but little ones, you can use those uh, to, to keep yourself fit and, and, and exercise. I was um, telling uh, my wife uh, this morning, the whole talk in the, in the media today is all about flattening the curve and flattening the curve. And I told Lily, excuse me, I told Lily, and I said, well, I don't know about you, but the most important curve that I want to flatten right now is my tummy, because I can see that my tummy curve is not <laughs> flattening. <laughs> so, because of, you know, being inbound for so long, but I've been occupied uh, doing a lot of writing, finished the first book, and I'm working on the second book right now. So, um, but the fact of the matter is that um, uh, don't uh, have a routine and have a rules. 
Routine, rules, you're safe. No routine, no rules. It's going to be anarchy. It's going to be chaos. The kids are going to rule you, if especially the little ones running around, if there's no rules and regulations. And trust me, when you have rules and regulations and, and strict discipline, kids are not going to die. They will not. So therefore, have rules. It's good for them. Amen? It's very, very important. Now, um, I don't know if there's any more questions and uns no more questions. Perfect. So in that case, I would like to just go into a time of um, prayer. And I think it's necessary for us to pray. First of all, we want to thank God for his protection. And thank you, Jesus, for his protection. Uh, I remember, um, I think it was usually to, towards the end of last year and towards the beginning of this year, we have an intercessory group that prays every Sunday morning. And then also we have a 24-hour prayer clock in the church. While we were praying, uh, Anayo kept saying, who's the one who leads the prayers, he said, I just keep feeling we need to pray uh, for healing. He said, I don't understand why I just keep having this urge. It was even one season I was wondering, but everything seems to be okay. Why do we keep praying for healing? But as this COVID broke up, it suddenly made sense as to what God was doing. He, he knew ahead of time uh, that we need to pray. And, and, and thank God, God has actually protected each and every single person, not only in our physical family, but also in our spiritual family. And those of you who are watching, I just want you to know we've been praying for you every single day, especially our um, uh, first responders, those of you who are working in line, either in the hospital or with the old uh, elderly people. We have been praying mm -hmm. that the Lord would uh, keep you safe. Mm -hmm. We've been doing that. So I just want you to know that uh, uh, you have our prayers. We'll continue to do that and, and uh, ask the Lord's blessings. Plus, also, I think this, like we mentioned uh, about this COVID period, it's also a time of reflection, really a time of reflection. So let us reflect and ask the Lord to do a work of healing in and through us. Uh, more, more, more importantly, a spiritual healing and a drawing us back to uh, the Lord. Because I believe God wants us to, to come closer to him in a time like this. Hallelujah. So we're going to pray and ask God to bless you. And then we're also going to take some time to... Uh, worship God not only in teaching like we do, but also worship God in uh, in our finances. Actually, let me just mention this before we go there. Um, sometimes, you know, in a congregation, we uh, very soon you'll have a book that's released. I've just written a book about the seven economic principles, biblical economic principles, um, and and it's very well stated in that book how uh, worship with through giving all the seven principles. It's a form of worship, and it's nothing to do with uh, donation. God doesn't need our donation. Just remember, it's an honor and a mm -hmm. privilege to be able to bring him something. Mm -hmm. uh, he is the king of all kings and the lord of all. He doesn't need, he, the church doesn't need your money. We don't need it. Neither does uh, God. It's an honor and a privilege to bring him back his tithe, uh, as well as his offerings and all the other uh, gifts that you have especially in the time that we are in right now with the world economy looming towards um, a form of a, a depression. Uh, but there's no such thing as economic depression in the kingdom of God. Thank God. Therefore, I, tr I, I want to uh, encourage you to be faithful to God. If you, have, you have, if you have slipped, this is the time to come back and be faithful to Him. Um, I've been teaching my kids from there when they were kids now, now they're grown-up men i've always told them mm. said, no matter what you do mm. you know sometimes you might steal an ice cream from the fridge or or take the soda that you're not supposed to i said there's one thing you never want to do do not rob <laughs> god <laughs> you don't want to do that and i thank god for his blessings upon their lives uh, we, we have been practicing and preaching to them so i want us to pray uh, first for you, and then I want us to pray for God's tithes and offering. We're going to a time of uh, worshipping Him through giving. And then I'll talk to you a little bit about what's going to happen on Sunday before we close in prayer for all of you. Amen? So we'll just join in prayer. I'm going to pray for you, and I'm going to ask Lillian to pray for the tithes and offerings while we uh, take a little moment to just uh, go to tithes and offerings, and after which we will come back and give you some information about Sunday before we close in prayer. Amen. Mm. So let me just pray for the people first. Yes, Heavenly Father, Jesus. I just want to commit you, those who are watching. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you that they took the time to tune in to your word and also to what uh, you are doing in and through their lives. I just pray these thoughts I've I've, uh, addressed here that you would help us, Lord, to understand that there is a forced Sabbath going on in the world. And even though it's being slowly opened up, help us, Lord, never to forget what you're doing in and through us. Second of all, remind us, Lord, that uh, you are having a time of separation between the wheat and the weeds that we will not Thank be you, counted Jesus. among the weeds mm. that we collected and thrown into the fire, mm. but the wheat which is meant Thank for the you. harvest. You, and help us to be part of the harvesters, to go out there and harvest the souls for you. Last but not least, I also want to pray to remind us, Lord, that you're coming back for a bride that mm. is without spot, without Amen. wrinkle, without Thank blemish, you, and that if we Thank have you, been uh, babysat mm. through a simplistic, uh, sweet, sweetened gospel, Help us, Lord, to to now understand the true gospel, the blood-soaked gospel of the blood of Jesus, that you paid a price. Yes, it is free, but oh, God have mercy, it's not it's not cheap. So help us, Lord, to also take up our Thank cross you, and to follow you, especially mm. in these uh, last days where we have learned a lot about Thank what you, you're Jesus. doing around the world. Thank and we you know Jesus. you're coming back soon. These are the last days. But help us, Lord, to be aware mm. that this is just a dress-up rehearsal. I pray Jesus. that fear will go from in all those who are watching and that faith will arise mm. and that even their families believe, as you said, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ mm. and you shall be saved and your household. And I pray this Amen. for each and every one that are Amen. watching. Thank you, Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise Thank God. You, Amen. Jesus. And Lillian will just pray for the tithes and the offerings as we are going to do that. Ulf might give you some signs. And you can also uh, uh, be involved with your own uh, telephones wherever you are right now. So as yes, Lillian prays, I will just take time to use my phone and uh, pay my uh, offerings. Can you please? Yeah. Thank you. Father, we thank you. And as we take this time to worship you with our finances, we thank you. The tithe belongs to you and it is our acknowledgement of your Lordship. And so as we pay our tithe, we pray for your blessing. As you promise in your word to open the windows of heaven and bless. Lord, I pray that your blessing will be upon your people. And as we worship you with our finances, God, may your blessing continue to flow in every aspect, not just financially, but in health, in joy, in well-being. We thank you for the opportunity to also continue to support our missionaries who are out there, especially during this challenging time, God, in Mm. different parts of the world. Some of these other churches are struggling. God, we pray that we will be faithful with our missions giving so that we can continue to empower these people who are out there. Mm. so that your gospel can be preached to the uttermost part of the world. And God, we thank you again for this privilege, this possibility to be able to to pay our tithe, give our offering through all these different means. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, before we close in a word of prayer and, and ask the Lord's benediction and blessing to be upon you, just to let you know that on Sunday at 10.30 to 12, around about there, we're going to have uh, our regular time of praise and worship. We might, we, we have a guest speaker, by the way, one of our board members, Victoria. She's going to share a message, beautiful message about Joshua. Hey, if you're, if you're not yet uh, on our homepage in terms of getting our newsletters, please go to our homepage and sign up for the newsletter, all right? Because in that way you will be follow you you can know what's gonna be preached every Sunday as well as be updated with all the announcements. Mm-hmm. Victoria's gonna preach. Now maybe I hope and pray that it'll happen. We might have a guest uh, a song leader, a worship leader, who is going to do it from overseas. It's a little mystery right now. I can't reveal the whole thing to you, but I just want you to know that. It's going to be something beautiful, all right? I hope and pray it's all going to take place. So maybe you should uh, tune in on Sunday to be a part of that. And I might end up being your, uh, what I call, uh, service leader to just tie the entire thing together. And of course, Lillian will be there to pray for the uh, regular prayer request and so on and so forth. Uh, That is in charge on Sunday. And uh, before we close in prayer and bless you, I know that my wife uh, might not be very excited uh, for me to say this, but I want to say it anyway. Today, this very day, 31 years ago, we were actually married. 
this is our wedding anniversary day. <laughs> so, if you are there, pray for us. 31 years we have been together. Um, it's uh, actually sad that um, uh, it is uh, rare these days for people to understand that there's no such thing as perfect uh, marriage, you know, there's only or oh, perfect people, there's only couples being renewed. We are always being uh, perfected in our marriages. Today I sent uh, some thank you messages to different pastors. There were many pastors who was uh, uh, involved in our wedding. And one of them wrote back to me, George E., if you remember. He wrote back to me and I said, hey, if you remember 31 years ago, this day, you and your wife were involved in, in our wedding. He said, oh, congratulations, I'm so happy for you. And then he told me, he said, um, this uh, October, he and his wife, they're going to be married for 50 years. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> that's just so cool. And we have people in our congregation who are married far more 50 years. Even in Lisa, is much longer, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, we thank God for that. Amen. So, uh, brothers and sisters, let me just pray for you and ask the Lord's blessing over you. And we thank God for all our volunteers for helping us. Ulf, who is a staff, uh, on staff alongside with me and Lillian, and Prince, who came about to help us out to... Uh, to do the recording, which is very, very nice of you. So I uh, just stretch my hands forth and pray for you and ask God's blessing to be upon you. The Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, and the Lord make his face shine upon you, and that the Lord will lift up his countenance and give you peace. Shalom. God bless you and see you on Sunday. Sunday. Bye.